First of all, we have to understand the importance of the number 12. It can only be 12. You have a disinclusion of Dan. Therefore, something else must take the place of Dan. Most of the Danites had been unfaithful and went into reprobation under Jeroboam II. You had a split of the Joseph into the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh being, being the sons of Joseph. Again, that would make it a 12. The 12 always has to be maintained. Same as the 12 apostles, the 12 tribes of Israel, corresponding to the 12 stars on the head of the woman and so forth that we see in, in the book of Genesis and in Revelation. It always has to be that 12. Uh, so that's the first thing we have to understand. You must sustain the number 12. If a tribe is taken out, something else has to compensate for it to keep the number at 12. When they were mobile through the wilderness, the Levites were around the ark itself. That was the divine presence. But Judah went first because that indicated the Messiah would come from the tribe of Judah, from the line of David. King David, the messianic royal line of David, and the Messiah himself would come from the tribe of Judah. They would lead the people of God to victory in uh, the conquest of the land and so forth. Once they get to the land, then there's the apportionment of the land by Joshua at places like Tel Hazor and so forth. Uh, you see then a different configuration going away from where the ark was. The ark had been for 200 years in Shiloh, Shiloh, but then in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was in the area of the tribe of Judah. It had been Dan that was very much up at the north. There was an outpost of Dan in the south near what is today Tel Aviv, around what is today Tel Aviv, and to the south um, east of Tel Aviv. Ephraim was in the south. Manasseh was in the south, or in the middle, but heading south. Benjamin was in the absolute south next to Judah. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, they were on the Transjordan, and then Naphtali, Asher, and Zebulun and Issachar were in the north. It changed according to the role of the time. In the beginning, in the conquest, the tribe of Judah went first because it represented that the Messiah is our conqueror in the character of David. Once you enter the land, however, the divine presence, the Levites, had to bring the temple into the area of the tribe of Judah. Before that, in Shiloh, it was in the area of the tribe of Benjamin. Christ was at the forefront of our battle in this life and in this world, making the conquest. Christ is at the forefront. Remember, as we looked at 1 Corinthians 10, the sojourning in the wilderness is a picture of the church's sojourning in the world, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 10. Christ is at the forefront, the tribe of Judah. Okay, he's in the tribe of Judah. But once we enter the promised land, he's not up front. He's at the center of it. You understand? He's at the center of it. Hence, that's where the temple was built, in the area of the tribe of Judah in Jerusalem, on what we call in Hebrew, Har Habayat, the Temple Mount, Har Zion, Mount Zion. That is the reason the configurations change. Secondly, there is also... The idea of reward is somehow implied in the configuration in Ezekiel. How faithful the tribes were to God during their history would indicate how close they were to the temple where the divine presence is going to be in the millennium. The more faithful you are to Jesus now indicates how close you're going to be to him personally in the millennial reign. That's what it illustrates. And also in eternity, who's going to be closest to the throne and so forth. There are, the same as there are degrees of condemnation in hell for non-believers, there are degrees of reward for believers, both in the millennium, to the best of my understanding, and in eternity, in paradise, in, in heaven, in the heaven to come, the new heaven. Um, that is the reason we have a change of configuration. Now there's more to it than this, but it's the most I can explain within five minutes.